Oh hey, just doing a little light reading for today's video. Speaking of which, today on Hey How's That Work with Luca, that's me, I'm Luca. We're going to be talking about the automatic, the bit that keeps your watch wound when you're not winding it. Unless your watch doesn't have an automatic, in which case you got to do that yourself. So we're going to find out how that works today, like now. How's that work? The automatic, that is. How does that work? Well, here we go. So there's two main systems. There is a unidirectional winding automatic and a bidirectional winding automatic. I'm gonna let you guess the difference. Did you get the difference that one winds in one direction and one winds in both directions? If you did, you're a champion, and I love you for that. Your unidirectional, it's the first one we'll talk about, it's gonna wind in one direction. The benefits of that is a unidirectional is much simpler than a bi-directionally winding automatic. You have less parts, so it's gonna be thinner. Your mainspring on a unidirectional automatic is almost always at full wind, so it's not completely necessary to even wind in both directions. But, that being said, you know me and you know I hate wasted motion in a watch. And half the motion of a unidirectionally winding automatic is wasted. When it's spinning in the direction that isn't the direction it winds in, it's just slipping free and kind of spinning around, kind of like a bicycle. If you're riding on a bicycle with running gears and you stop your pedals, it's gonna keep on spinning and nothing's gonna happen. You're just gonna like coast, it's nice. But today, we're gonna to be looking at the bi-directionally winding automatic. It's a little more common. You're gonna see it more often. You see it in your 2892, Rolex, Omega, a lot of people use it. And it's a little more complicated. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And then, hey, if you want to go back and look at your unidirectional, it's going to be a piece of cake compared. So here we go. Okay, before we get into the uh, down and dirty of how this works, first I'm going to list out the parts so you know what you're looking at before I start just rattling off wig wags and Pauls and Homer Simpson springs. Uh, also, those were all real watch parts. There's actually a part called a wig wag and called a Homer Simpson spring. I didn't make any of that up. So. You have your oscillating weight, you have your pinion, you have your first coupling wheel, you have a pawl, you have a coupling pinion, you have a reduction gear train, then you got your second coupling wheel, and that's about it. There's other bits and bobs in there, but these are the parts that make your automatic winder winding, that make your automatic work. So first you have your oscillating weight. That's the big heavy weight spinny bit. Attached to the axis of that weight, will be what's called your pinion. Your pinion is a little tiny baby gear attached to the axis. When the oscillating weight turns in a certain direction, it's gonna drive the first coupling wheel. On this wheel is gonna be what's called a pawl. The pawl will drive the coupling pinion via the ratchet teeth. The pinion will transmit the force to the first wheel of the reduction gear train. This is going to drive the second coupling wheel, which will mesh with the first and then the pawl of the second coupling wheel will ride over the ratchet teeth of the coupling pinion, and it's free, so it's going to follow the movement of the first wheel of the reduction gear train. So that's how your automatic can wind your mainspring, even if the oscillating weight is turning in an opposite direction of the direction your mainspring winds in, because mainsprings only wind in one direction. And in the case of a unidirectional, when the oscillating weight is spinning in the direction that it winds in, well, it's going to wind. But if it's spinning in the opposite direction, there's going to be what's called an intermediate sliding wheel, which is going to kind of slide out of its way, so it can just spin freely without actually winding anything or touching anything, like I said about the bike. Just, it's just spinning. So this actually leads into one of my favorite problems. I know that's a bad thing to have a favorite problem, but you'll see why in a second. So if you look here, you're actually gonna see your reversers. These are gonna be the guys that will keep your automatic winding in the right direction. So you see if I turn it, they'll turn in the opposite direction. This one turns that way, this one turns that way. So when you have, uh, well, if you have say you have magnetism in your watch or you have debris or say one of the teeth is broken off, something. If your reverser seizes up, then it'll actually cause an error which is called helicoptering and you know how much I love tiny helicopters. 
when you wind your watch and those reversers seize up, and this happens. And this is called helicoptering. And if this is happening to your watch, then it's gonna need a service probably. So it's a relatively simple system, but we like to challenge our editor, Joe, and make him animate all of these fun, intricate systems. So good job, Joe. And that's how that works with Luca. It's me, I'm Luca. Jonathan would like me to ask you to like and subscribe as well. Please, do it. Do it. See you next time.